Today, we're going to take a quick look at how to install fonts on Windows. It's super fast, easy, and a must for any digital artist or designer. And if you're on a Mac, we have some options for you as well that are just as easy. Now, there are millions of custom fonts, some free and some premium, which is excellent news for us either way. But if you're using a font for commercial use, be sure to double check that licensing as many free fonts are only available for personal use. DAFont.com is a go-to option for many artists as they have plenty of commercial and personal use fonts. Just something to keep in mind to check out that licensing before you use it. This one catches my eye, uh, so let's go with it and hit download. With the font downloaded, extract the font right onto your computer's desktop. The font will likely come zipped in a .zip file. So to extract it, double click the .zip and then drag and drop the contents right onto the desktop. Alternatively, you can select the .zip and then right click extract all. Now there are a couple of different ways you can actually install fonts in Windows. Option 1. Select all the font files and right click install font for all users. Once installed, you can delete the font file over on the desktop and the original zip file as well. Some people like to keep an archive, I personally just delete it. Option 2, if install for all users is not showing in the right click menu or maybe it's grayed out, you can always manually place the fonts right inside of the Windows font folder. Just open the control panel. Open the fonts folder and drag and drop your font files right from the desktop into the fonts. With the fonts installed, we can open Photoshop and double check that they were installed correctly by searching for them in the fonts dropdown menu. However, if a Photoshop is already open, a no need to restart it. The fonts dropdown menu will refresh and your font will be right there waiting for you. Next, let's look at Adobe fonts and how we can use them on both Mac and Windows PCs. Adobe font, formerly known as Adobe Typekit, is just a collection of a licensed font included with most Adobe Creative Cloud plans. All fonts on Adobe font can be used for personal and commercial use, and with thousands of fonts available in the collection, you have plenty to choose from. The fonts do change, with old ones leaving and new ones being added, a something to keep in mind if a font goes missing. So let's open Photoshop while logged into our Creative Cloud account and click the More from Adobe Fonts option right in the font dropdown menu. Choose the font you want to download and then toggle on Activate Fonts to activate the font's different typefaces and weights. You can also choose to only activate some of the font styles while leaving the others inactive, which will help keep the font's dropdown menu uh, shorter and uh, a bit more organized. I tend to just download them all though. Once activated, go right back into Photoshop and search for your font by name. It should pop right up. Adobe fonts download automatically and sync across all Adobe programs, as long as you are logged into your Creative Cloud account and have had a recent internet connection, though you can use them while offline. While we're talking fonts, let's take a quick look at the different files you might come upon while installing your fonts. The main two are going to be OTF and TTF. Both OTF and TTF are files containing fonts. Almost all modern applications, including Photoshop, can use both OTF and TTF together and interchangeably. Uh, so what key difference could they possibly have if you can use both? And is one better than the other? Depending on who you are, a lot and yes. So TTF stands for True Type Font, an older font file extension created by both Apple and Microsoft to help standardize font files between the two operating systems. TTF set the standard for what font files are today. OTF, on the other hand, was also a joint effort, but between Adobe and Apple, coming years after TTF. And while OTF contains all the features that TTF does, it also has more. This includes increased storage that allows for up to 65,000 characters. Those extra characters give OTF fonts more advanced typesetting features. So OTF has more options and features crucial to the work of both typesetters and many designers in general. 
With that said, if you aren't a graphic designer or typesetter, you'll likely never use or notice those extra features. If OTF is an option, then use it. However, if a font only contains a TTF file, that will work just as well in most cases, and the chances are that font simply didn't need to be OTF. And that is all there is to it. Just download, drag and drop. If this helped you out, give us a little like, and if you want more tips, be sure to subscribe to Design Bombs. You can even turn on notifications so you don't miss a thing. Have fun downloading those fonts, it can be very addicting.